How's it going everybody? Welcome into the shop. It is great to have y'all here. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name's Andy Rawls and I build custom furniture out of this 1800 square foot shop here in Texas. Now I've got a piece I'm building now for a client called the Burnham Settee. This is a piece that I designed. It's on my website. You can order it. And um, it's basically a bench with a back. The design kind of uh, is inspired by early Texas furniture. It's a really cool traditional looking piece. One of my favorite pieces to build. Now I do have a full build video uh, on this piece on my YouTube channel. So I'll link that in the description if you want to watch the whole process of building this bench. But I thought in this video, it'd be fun to kind of give you all a sneak peek into uh, what I call a housed mortise and tendon. So basically this is a joint. You've got the leg of the, of the settee right here and you can see it has a slight curve to the front. Basically you've got to bring the front rail in and, and mate these two pieces together with mortise and tendon joints. Now the challenge is, is you have two options. You can curve your shoulder on your tendon to match this, which is quite challenging, or we can bury the shoulder into the leg, which I call a house mortise and tenon. And that's what we're gonna do. I already have the jigs, I've designed this process, I already had the jigs made up. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, what the jigs do, how you use them with a plunge router, and how you cut this joint. It's really quite simple and a really effective way to bring together uh, a curved leg into uh, obviously a straight rail. So let's just jump in and get started. So it all starts with this jig right here that I made. Uh, it has an acrylic top to it. I've CNC'd out um, the opening I need for this and this acrylic top is replaceable. I have the instructions here on the side of what I need to do. My parts needed to be sanded on my Y belt to 1.276. That's just a heavy inch and a quarter. So that's this thickness. And the reason why that's important is because this is designed to fit over this and when I make this, it's a production setting, so I want it to be the same every time I make it. It also, um, the aprons, uh, which is the mating rail piece, I sand those to 789. That's also very important because this is going to cut an opening here that you're going to see real soon that fits a 0.789 thickness piece. That'll make more sense here soon. Uh, it tells me which bushings I need for my router. So I need a 1 inch bushing for the mortise and then a 5 8 bushing for the pocket. Also, this jig has an adjustable screw right here. If you look inside the jig, you can see here I have some reference lines. That's the center of the jig. I mark this where I want the mortise, the center of the mortise on my workpiece right there. So I can take those and line those three lines up and that's how I reference the jig. So you put it on, just kind of tap it. Now the jig's in place. You can see those lines are lining up. Now the inside, you can see that screw right there. That allows some adjustment to get this on the right plane. Okay, so before I cut this, let me show you real quick actually what we're gonna be making. This is this is a from the original prototype that I built, um, and that's exactly what the joint's gonna look like. A 3 8 mortise right down this, the center, and then this little cutout housing. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut the mortise. So we put in the one inch bushing, and it fits in the jig exactly. The opening on the jig is one inch. So basically it's just gonna ride in there and cut this slot. Then we're going to put the smaller bushing in that's going to allow us to kind of move and cut uh, the wider housing section, um, the pocket that actually holds the entire uh, apron. So you still have a place for your joint to shoulder up down inside there. And then you actually have extra glue space uh, up here where it houses in. Okay, so the router just drops in. It's a little bit, the opening's a little bit bigger than the bushing. You can hear the little bit of slop that just allows it to move. We want to set the depth of cut to about seven eighths. Okay, so you can see that the mortise is cut. Uh, now we're going to come back and cut out the pocket and then we'll take the jig off and take a look at it. You can see there's a little bit more play and slop. If I can get this. So we're going to cut quite a, quite a bit bigger hole in here. Um, we're not going quite as deep. So let's make this cut and take a look. Pockets cut, so we'll come back with a chisel now and square that up. I'll go ahead and cut 
the other three of these and then we'll square them up and then we'll work on the tenon that mounts into this. It's always good. I always start cutting the in, the end grain or across the grain, I should say. Cut with the grain. It's not really cutting. You're more splitting the fibers. Then I'll take the reason I like to use a one inch is because I got a lot of blade here. I can kind of support it against the opening and just kind of knife it down. Okay, so come back and do the same. Okay, so we've got uh, our, our bench leg, our settee leg right here, and then our rail here, the front of the settee, it fits into that pocket basically. The pocket is about the same dimension width and thickness of this piece it is this piece i leave a little big i cut the tenon and then we'll hand plane this both in its width and its thickness to fit it's just safer to give yourself a little little wiggle room so you're not trapped in a corner and if it's if you end up with a gap there's nothing you can do um, whereas if you're a little off center on your mortise on your tenon it raises the piece a little off you can adjust it by hand planing a little bit so we're going to go to the table saw cut these tenons and then um, round them over to match the radius on the mortise and then we'll fit them into the housing. Raise it up. Not quite three eighths. About it either yet. A little bit more. That's a pretty good fit. Okay, so we got the fit dialed in I'm not quite probably can't see it but I'm um, happy with how that is so now we're gonna move the fence over and adjust how far down the shoulders I'm also gonna check to see how square this cut is because sometimes this cross cut fence is not set up square so we want to make sure that's cutting nice and square and then we want to set our fence okay so we need to cut about I think a three-quarter inch long tin and we're gonna double check it here with the calipers that is actually a little bit less, no, a little heavier. That's good. So we're slightly over three quarters. So that means we're going to cut our shoulder at three quarters. I need to lay that out and then set my fence. So I'm just going to clamp a board to my fence. And the reason I'm doing this you don't want to ride your board on the, the crosscut sled and on the fence. It's too much of a risk of binding up. So if we have a stop, we can hit our board to and then clear it once we go forward. Now we're not binding on that fence at all. Okay, so I've kind of, I made the decision here to just kind of square these mortises up as opposed to rounding over the tenons. I think it's just way easier. This I can pretty much just knock out pretty dang quick.
That's fitting a little bit too tight. This is a great plane for adjusting tenons. This is pretty much all I use it for. So this is a rabbit block plane, so the blade goes all the way to the outside edge. So I can come over here and make a few passes on the cheek of my tenon. I want to do it evenly off both sides. Make the smallest of adjustments with this little plane. Okay, so you can see how this comes together and now like we said we left this a little fat so we have to plane it to fit into that opening now that's a bit of a tricky deal because there's no way to mark it you can't you know mark how much you want to take off so that it's really easy to take off too much material if you just put it in the vise start hand planing you really don't have any reference to go to so what i like to do is just chamfer the shoulder the nice chamfer uh, it'll get buried inside there, and then I, it allows me to see when I put it together where it's hitting and how much I need to take off. Um, it's just kind of a visual aid, so we'll do that real quick. Get a little bit more blade out. So I'm able to kind of watch that chamfer and see how much I'm taking off. Almost need to take off the whole chamfer. So once you've got it, I'm going to re-chamfer it because I, you don't want this to be a crisp hard edge going into this because it's just, if you hammer it in and it's too tight, it's just going to bang this all up and mess it up. So if you chamfer it, at least it can kind of slide in there without taking the edges off. Let's have a look here. As you can see, it's sliding in no problem. It's a little bit of a gap on top, and you can see we're too long on the bottom. So I can move this piece up to, to close this gap and be good there. We're probably going to have to shave a little bit off right down there. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, it's fitting in nicely right there. I mean, there's no gap. So I think we're looking pretty good. The gap you see there is just the fact that it hasn't made its way in yet because obviously it's curved. So I'm going to make the adjustment to move this to close that gap and then we'll take a little bit off the bottom and we should be able to bring it home. Then we're going to take a chisel and just chamfer this shoulder just like we did on the long edges just to help get it inside that housing so it's not breaking up any of the crisp edges. The other side, do a little bit of hand planing too here. Should do it. And then make the chamfer. All right, let's grab our leg put it on. Good 
fit here. Okay, there it is. It really came out nice. Always happy. These are so much fun to make. I really enjoy the challenge of these, and I love the way it looks when you got this nice curved uh, piece and a straight piece coming into it. It's just a really cool look. And you need, it's quite a bit of work, but you need the strength there. It's all worth it because this is a long span for this bench, about 70 inches. You need strong joints at this point, and you need to dial those in. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We'll use some oak pegs to put in there. Just dry fitted, this thing's rock solid. I mean, I can barely move it. So it's a good solid joint uh, in a necessary situation and a really cool looking joint with a curved leg going into a straight apron. Okay, so that is it. That is uh, how you connect a curved leg to a straight piece. It's a fairly simple process. The challenge is in making your jigs. You know, I've spent quite a bit of time getting this process set up. It's fairly quick now that I have everything dialed in, but once you get your jigs made, um, it's really basic Morrison tenon joinery from then on, uh, and it provides a really strong join as I've already demonstrated. Great little spotlight on a really cool build, this uh, Burnham set T. If you want to see the full build, I'll put the link in the description. Um, really cool video, and if you're interested in one of these, I sell them off my website. So um, if you'd like to own one of these and put it in your house, I'd love to make you one. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on furniture, you can always go get a t-shirt or a hat. Any bit of support, I'm as much appreciated. I uh, hope everyone out there is staying safe. And I always appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you next time.